Hello, uh, this is just a quick tutorial on how to make a, a good-looking backpack icon for your Steam Workshop entry. Um, so, there are a few things you're going to need. You're going to need to install the Source SDK, which I did not mention in my last video. Um, uh, it's located in your library, and if you go down to the Tools section, you'll notice that there's a bunch of tools that you can install. So find the one that says Source SDK. I have it favorited right here. Go ahead and install that. You're going to need it. And run it at least once. Um, so that it unpacks correctly. And due to the way that uh, Valve has recently set up their Steam Pipe system, it's no longer going to work properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to make some changes um, to the Source SDK to get it to run properly. So if you go ahead and uh, run that, <coughs> um, for me it's going to open up, but you might get an error on your end. Um, so if you don't want uh, an error, what you're, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to your uh, program files, Steam, Steam apps, common, Team Fortress 2, TF folder, and in this folder you'll find a file that says game info, and um, we're going to want to open this up. So, so go ahead and open this up with Notepad, and uh, let's see if I can do this properly. ICEyes on tf2maps.net has uh, been nice enough to explain exactly what you need to do to fix the source SDK. Um, so basically, it all it involves is really um, a little addition to this file, and then also just to change the the game info path. So um, I'm going to link to this uh, post in the video description, and also on the Steam guide. Uh, so basically all you need to do is, in this gameinfo.txt file, you want to add this tools app ID, and then a few tabs, and then 211 on the 22nd line, uh, right here. You need to add that in. And then if you scroll down to the 77th line, you're going to want to add in these two. Um, these two lines right here, the game, gameinfo underscore path, and the game tf. So again, um, add these in, and then you can save that and close it. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up the source SDK, uh, go to edit game configurations right here, and then you want to go to Team Fortress 2, edit this, and then your default directory will be to your um, your own folder, so you're going to want to change your username here to common, or you could also browse for it, but whatever your username says here, just replace that with, with common, and then hit OK. Um, and then save that. So now when you, hit, when you open up the model viewer, um, it should work without crashing. So there we go. So if you go ahead and load a model, you'll see, for instance, um, it should work properly. So let's see here. So yeah, so it worked properly. So I can um, look at this now in the model viewer without having it crash. So from here you can take a nice screenshot to make this a backpack icon, but what you guys are probably wondering is um, how do I compile this in the first place to even uh, look at it um, with Half-Life Model Viewer? And the answer is um, what you're going to want to do is compile your model using the in-game beta import system and then uh, once the model is compiled you can access it. So um, before we do that though we're gonna have to make a dummy backpack icon and the reason for this is that the game won't compile unless you already have a backpack icon. So it's somewhat um, counterintuitive but in order for us to even get a compile that we can use, we're going to need to just create a dummy icon. So what you're going to do is just go into Photoshop or or GIMP. I'll show you both ways. Uh, create a new document that's 512 by 512 pixels. Hit OK. Fill this completely with black. All right. And then what we're going to do is just uh, pick a section in the middle, just a really small section, and fill it with white or any color really, it doesn't really matter. And then in the channels tab, go ahead and create a, a new channel, duplicate channel, and just call this alpha. And that should um, line up exactly with what we want. So um, I'll explain this in a bit, but basically uh, for backpack icons, 
um, your icon has to sit in a 512 by or a 512 by 328 region. It can't be outside of that. And then the alpha channel is what dictates what part is um, is seen and what parts are transparent. So the white part in the alpha channel corresponds to what part you can actually see in game, the, the icon, and the black part of the alpha channel corresponds to everything else being uh, transparent. So you can go ahead and save this as just whatever you want. So I'm just going to call this like um, uh, dummy uh, icon. Uh, save it as 32 bits per pixel. Hit OK. Um, and for uh, GIMP users, it's the same deal. Just file new, create a new uh, image size that's 512 by 512. Um, fill this with black. Um, then what we're going to want to do is maybe select a region in the middle here again. Fill that with white. And then now, in the Layers tab, if you right-click on the layer that you're working with and you hit Add Layer Mask, select black with full transparency and that'll turn your entire image uh, transparent so don't worry GIMP has this weird way of displaying alpha channels with the region still selected go ahead and fill that region with white okay so now you're the only part that shows up is um, uh, basically the the part that's gonna show up as the backpack icon um, so we'll go ahead and right click your layer now and hit apply layer mask and you'll see if you go to the channels tab that it created a, an alpha channel for us and it's basically exactly where we want it right in the middle okay so um, now we're going to go ahead and file export um, save this as a dot tga we're going to call this again dummy2 dot tga and an important thing is we're going to want to uncheck this RLE compression box. I'm not exactly sure why, um, but I've had problems in the past with this, um, and it doesn't work with the uh, beta importer. So just go ahead and export that with the check mark unboxed, and then we can go ahead and minimize these things. So go ahead and open up TF2. Uh, then go to the workshop, uh, click publish new item, um, and go to import and from here you're, what you want to want to do is you're going to want to um, select all the settings like like I explained in the last video so that you can compile your model um, except one one uh, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, open the one that I had from last time so so I can just go really quickly so I'm just going to call this uh, just for the purpose of this tutorial like icon tutorial or something okay so I'm just going to close the backpack icon out really quickly so uh, you'll see, it, um, if we go to the uh, dummy icons that we made, you'll notice that both the Photoshop one and the GIMP one should work. So basically the icon just shows up as this white box or whatever. So this is just temporary, just so we can get a good compile. So now if you go ahead and preview this, um, it should work. Okay, so hit OK. And now here's the part where we get our, we, we want to compile our model. So go ahead and hit verify. All right, and then click finish. Okay, now it says your item is saved as iconTutorial.zip. Okay, so this part is um, is what we wanted because basically now we have a compiled MDL in our client side files that we can use to open up in a Half Life Model Viewer. So even though it saved it as a zip, it also saved. Um, uh, the, just the MDL uh, in a non-zipped format in your uh, in, in in a folder, and I'll show you where that is. So go ahead and click cancel. We're not going to um, uh, do anything more with that for now. So you'll notice that in your uh, Team Fortress 2 TF folder, if you go to um, your workshop folder, you'll see that it created the zip file that we were talking about, Icon Tutorial, right there. More importantly, though, in the Team Fortress TF folder, if you go to your models. Workshop, Player, Items, Engineer folder, you'll see that it also created a, a non-zipped folder which contains um, the MDL file and associated files, which we're going to use um, to take the backpack icon image. So, open up the source SDK uh, that we fixed, or alternatively you can use the fixed version, um, which ICI's I think posted a fixed version of the 
Half-Life model viewer on that uh, page I linked to. Um, uh, open up the model viewer. Uh, go to File, Load Model, and scroll down to Workshop, Player, Items, Engineer, and then the Icon Tutorial folder that we made. So you can open that up, and you'll notice that it uh, it worked. So now we have a usable um, model that we can use to take some nice screenshots of this. So what I'm going to do here is see there's this um, uh, three set there's a set of axes here that I don't want. So you can turn that off by going to let's see here. Um, here we go. If you go to attachments and you just select none, um, it that'll disappear. So the attachments tab and just hit none. So now it should be good. We can change the lighting a little bit by holding down control and then left mouse button and just moving this around so we can get some good lighting. Um, let's see, right click moves it in and out and then just regular left mouse button uh, rotates and and uh, in different axes. Um, and uh, shift left mouse button moves it around. So once we have it like how we want, I say that's pretty good. Um, maybe, maybe like that. Okay. Once we have it how we want, um, what you want to do is you're going to want to change the background color by going to Options, Background Color. Choose something like green. Like I like this color; it's it's pretty good. And just hit OK. All right. Um, and now what you want to want to do is you're going to want to take a screenshot of this. So just a uh, print screen or snipping tool, whatever you want. I usually just print screen this. Bring this into Photoshop onto your dummy image or whatever. You can just, uh, whoops, here we go, print screen. There we go. So bring this in to Photoshop. And now what we're going to want to do is uh, delete this green background. So there are two ways that I usually like doing. So let's see here. Where's the eraser? Okay, so there's a background eraser tool which is really useful for this. So if you just uh, hold down the left mouse button on this eraser tool, you can just select background erase tool. And what this does, uh, select discontiguous here. And I I think a tolerance of about 50% is okay. What you can do now is you can click anywhere in the green, and then just now start deleting only green parts of your of the uh, of the image. So, just go ahead and get rid of all of this. Okay. All right. And you'll notice that some parts, if I zoom in here, are still kind of a little bit green. So you can manually go ahead and fix this by in going down here into the Layer tab, locking the Alpha, Lock Transparent Pixels, click that. And then using the Eyedropper tool, you can slowly kind of just brush away any of this stuff. So I'm just going to use a, a, a simple brush. You can just brush away any of this stuff here. So just basically keep going along, etc. All right. So for the for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm not gonna go too specifically into that. But you can just modify it a little bit just so that you don't have any green edges. Um, another way of removing the uh, the background is simply to go to Select Color Range, and then you can click this green area here. Um, and then you can alter some settings to make sure that it's it works properly, and it should just select everything, uh, all, uh, just uh, just a green color. And if you hit delete, it should work fairly well. I think the other method actually was a little bit better, um, but you can do things like once you have it selected, go to the select menu, refine edge, um, and then alter some of these settings to get it a nice. Uh, good cut basically so let's see here so that's actually pretty good so now once you have um, this image we're going to want to scale this down so I'm just going to take this part of the image and just cut this out from this layer paste it into its own new layer and then scale this down alright so what what this icon needs to fit into is it needs to fit into a 512 by 328 window so that what I can what what I like to do is just make a new document, set the height to 328, hit OK, and just copy this and paste it in the middle, set that underneath, 
and now your icon should fit centered in there. If it's outside, it won't work. It's got to be inside this 512 by 328 window. So you can enlarge that, bring it in there, and once you're done, you can go ahead and hide that layer. So we have a nice centered image. Um, should be good. So now uh, go ahead and select. Um, go ahead and select your uh, your hat only, just the icon itself. Go into the channels tab. Go to the alpha layer and make sure that everything is black except your hat. So everything is black and your hat is white. So now it should look like this. All right. So this is the basically the finished backpack icon. Go ahead and save as um, a tar uh, TGA file. So we're going to call this like <coughs> tutorial final um, Photoshop. Uh, and save that as 32 bits per pixel. So uh, GIMP is the same way. Just delete the the green background, um, center it in the 512 by 328 region, and then make sure to add an alpha channel as described before, and then save that as a .tga with RLE compression unchecked. Um, and then once you have that saved, just go ahead and we can get rid of the source SDK. We don't need this anymore. We can close that out. Now go back into TF2. Go to Workshop, publish new item, import. Go ahead and open up what we had before. Um, sometimes it'll th everything won't show up. That's okay. Just go ahead and click the the class that you were working for, and everything will show up again. And then for the backpack icon, now we can actually go to the final image that we made, and you'll see that it shows up um, perfectly. So just the white part of the alpha channel is the stuff that showed up. Uh, everything else is, is transparent. Um, and then from there, you can go ahead and hit verify and finish, and then submit that to the workshop. So that's essentially how to make a good-looking backpack icon. Um, again, uh, thank you. Uh, for watching the tutorial. I hope I hope you guys found it useful. Uh, that's pretty much it. All right. Happy modeling.